there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. On this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. You know, most marketing pieces, you're talking about how great your product or service is, how great your business is. But with a case study, your customer is doing the talking. They're talking about their experience Mm -hmm. and how you help them get from where they were to where they wanted to be and the great results that they got because you helped them. So it's this, you know, unbiased third party telling their story about how much good you did for them. And I think that's a, a really uh, powerful marketing piece because uh, you're not asking people to believe you when you talk about yourself. You're saying, you don't have to believe me. Here's the proof. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on. You're faster than me. Guys. Hey, yeah. We've been together. I Oh man, you already said it. I was gonna ask her. She remembered the date. I have a gentleman on it. We are going to be talking about case studies and how it can help your business. Because, well, let's face it: if you own a business, you want to grow. Plain and simple. I have Jeff Strauss on, who is the founder and owner of Just Case Studies and just recently released his first first book, right, Jeff? That's right. Yes. All right. The book on case studies, how to build trust and profit using customer success stories. So first of all, welcome, Jeff. And I'm, man, I am really looking forward to this. Well, thanks for having me, Rich. Glad to be here. So case, yeah, I just want to know, before we get into the book, Let's go into a brief history, you know, of yourself, because uh, a lot of people, and I hear this from a lot of people, they go to high school. Yeah, you know, when you go to high school, you're well, at least now they want you to have a career plan. But let's face it, when you get out of high school and get into college, even in college, you change your degree. <laughs> a lot of people do. I think the percentage of people that actually graduate from college that went for a certain degree right out of high school is like 12%. It's ridiculous. Um, but when you got, when you were in high school, what was your goal? Did you even know what you wanted to do after high school? Not a clue. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Me neither. Well, I knew what I wanted to do. I was going to be a rock star, but okay. that didn't work out. So. Oh, man. <laughs> now, did you actually go to college, though? Uh, dropped out of college four times. Wait a minute, what? Yeah. Dropped out of three different <laughs> schools for a total of four times. Uh, one of my claims to fame is I dropped out of progressively more prestigious schools. Uh, started out at a tech school. I uh, got a job actually uh, working in computers from a guy in class. So I dropped out because I was getting money to get to do the stuff I was paying money to learn how to do. So no, no sense right. paying money. We can make money. Uh, On the job training. Uh, yeah, yeah, Exactly. Um, <laughs> next one was a state school and I went there for a couple of years and I got an opportunity to work on the uh, trading floor of the Chicago board of trade. Um, uh, and so oh, I nice. figured that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I left Eastern Illinois university to do that for a while. And then I, uh, came back and, uh, I was at, uh, DePaul university in Chicago, uh, two, t- two supper times and, uh, just never finished. Wow. <laughs> And now here you are doing what you want to do, I hope, right? Getting there. I think so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never know, though. <laughs> History would get paid otherwise, but we'll see. Yeah. So what you, we were talking before because uh, this is your first book you wrote. Yes. And I was shocked when you told me how you became a freelance writer. So if you can't tell everybody how you came about learning how to write your book, first of all. Uh, sure. Uh, the writing, writing the book was nothing that was on my radar at all. Uh, but opportunity came up, uh, like so much other, uh, other things that's, uh, been in my life and I just took it. Uh, I had met someone who is actually a book coach who helps business owners learn how to write books to use as a marketing piece for their business. And oh, wow. so I went through her course and in the span of about two months, I went from not even thinking about having a book to being a published author. Wow. I Okay. So, 
I take it she was your mentor then when it came to this. Uh, yeah, yeah. She has a whole thing. Um, she teaches you everything about it. She was in the financial planning industry. She had some uh, thing happen where uh, her career track got off. And uh, so she wrote a book. She, she, she took all that she knew about it. And she wrote a book, turned it into an international bestseller, uh, had fun with it. So she wrote another one. That one went to international bestseller. And she said, hey, I'm good at this. I'm going to turn this into a business. So that's her business. She helps auth- uh, businesses, business owners uh, become authors for their business. Now, what's her name? Uh, Kimberly Day. Kimberly Day. Okay. Yeah. I have to look for them books. And so more, so she didn't just help you write the book because correct me if I'm wrong, you turned your book into a business, right? Uh, The book is- Or was it the other way around? The business was there first. Uh, Okay. The book is kind of an authority builder and, you know, um, I knew, you know, going into it, I'm not going to be Oprah or Stephen King or anything like that. selling millions of copies, you know, it's, that's not the point of it. The point is that right. since December, I'm the guy that wrote the book on case studies. And I can say now, that. Tell her, tell everybody, because this is something where I think a lot of businesses are missing the boat. Um, how important are case studies to grow your business and especially for advertising too? Oh, I think they're really important. And I think, most businesses don't realize the power and uh, how different they are from other marketing pieces. Uh, you know, most marketing pieces, you're talking about how great your product or service is, how great your business is. But with a case study, your customer is doing the talking. They're talking about their experience mm-hmm. and how you help them get from where they were to where they wanted to be and the great results that they got because you helped them. So it's this, you know, unbiased third party telling their story about how much good you did for them. And I think that's a, a really uh, powerful marketing piece because uh, you're not asking people to believe you when you talk about yourself. You're saying, you don't have to believe me. Here's the proof. Right. So how how easy or hard is it for a business to actually do a case study? Um, you know, it just depends. Um, there are different ways you can go about it. Um, you can do a kind of a traditional basic format where you just present, here is the situation, here is the solution we provided, and here's the results that the customer got. Uh, the way that we do it, we do video and written case studies both, and we actually interact with our clients, customers, and get them to tell their story. So um, we'll send out a custom set of questions. They'll get them to answer. Uh, with the answers, they'll tell the story that that business wants told through the case study. And then we'll write it up and, uh, you know, uh, uh, finesse it just so it looks and feels how they want it. And, uh, yeah, then they have this story they can use in their marketing. So you actually, with your business, you can actually do the case studies for another business. Yes, that's that's our typical model, right? That's your, okay, which is great because there are, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur, a lot of people don't have the time to do it and if you you already hear businesses hiring like virtual assistants and so forth mm-hmm. um you know so it would make sense for them to hire you and go ahead i'm sorry no, i was just gonna say and that was kind of the whole uh uh plan for the book uh the book everything i know about case studies everything i could find on case studies i threw it into that book it's why are they important uh what are they how do you use them uh how do you create them if you read the book, you can make your own case studies. But then at the end, of course, it's, mm-hmm. oh, and by the way, if you don't have the time and energy to do this yourself, here's how you get a hold of me. So as far as making a profit, explain to everybody how, you know, doing a case study, how they can make a profit from it. Sure. Um, it is, again, a marketing piece. So it can be difficult to measure ROI sometimes on these marketing pieces because a lot of things go into people's yes. decision-making process. But you can put it on your website. Uh, you can uh, throw it into email marketing campaigns. You can use it in presentations. You can use it on social media. You know, if you have a certain target market and you have a case study for a business in that you served in that target market, you can put posts out on social media and say, hey, if you have a business like this, check out the story about this business that we helped. And you can link back to your website. So you can use it to drive traffic to your website. Uh, it's just a real versatile uh, marketing piece that you can use all over the place. Now, with case studies, and because I remember when I was in the IT field, we did case studies all the time. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I, I don't, I don't want to say we did our marketing department did. Um, but as far as like nowadays, you know, with the growth of social media and the internet, is it important to also use those, you know, whether it be Google reviews or Facebook reviews in your case studies? You know, um, the analogy that I like to make is uh, with movies, right? So you've got movies and you've mm-hmm. got movie reviews. Uh, a movie right. review is just, hey, this movie was great or this movie was horrible, but doesn't really tell you anything about the plot, the story, the characters, anything like that. You don't get the story, you just get thumbs up or thumbs down. Right. And that's kind of like what a Google review is or a testimonial is. It's kind of like a thumbs up or thumbs down about the business, but it doesn't tell that story case study tells the story. It's like, here's this business we helped. Here's, you know, what they do. Here's who they serve, how long they've been in business. Here's the situation they had. Here's all the options they looked at trying. Here's why they ultimately picked our business. And here's what it looked like when we worked with them. And here's the solution we provided. And uh, here's what happened because of this and the great results they got. So it's the whole journey of that customer versus this company is great. Okay. Um, Two things real quick. Sure. Because I don't want to wait till the end. Number one, tell everybody your website and where they can find the book. Sure. Uh, the website is justcasestudies.com, and the book is available on Amazon. And number two, how do they get in contact with you or your company? Uh, sure. Either go to the website or uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Okay. Yes. You're Okay. What is it with LinkedIn lately? It seems like it is freaking blowing up. You know, um, <laughs> in 2020, when I started the business, I had about 50 connections of people that I just had gone through my life, right? You know, uh, right. Uh, people I'd worked with, family, friends, this, that, and the other. Uh, then when I started, since then, since I started using LinkedIn seriously, I now have over 2,700 connections and followers. Whew. So uh, if you put the effort in, and the thing about it is, is again, in doing my research as I've evolved the business, I learned that uh, LinkedIn is the number one social media site for business to business. And I am in mm-hmm. B2B space, so it makes sense to be there. Right. Yeah. And it seems like it's, um, our, to me, it seems like they're adding more things because I, I've been on LinkedIn forever, but I really wasn't using it that much and then when i met when i had donnie on my show that's when i started using linkedin more yeah and i started seeing more people in it and then lo and behold now i'm getting all these contacts people want to connect and some sometimes you gotta watch them there's some (laughs) sly woods out there yes there are (laughs) yes there are i I got one today that uh said hey we want you to uh apply to uh win this award at our seminar in las vegas you know in july and right. uh, the guy only had, so I look at his profile, of course, and the guy only had about a hundred connections. Um, he was obviously Indian, but he was claiming that he lived in San Francisco. So, you know. Yeah, I've uh, seen a lot of them. Yeah. So there's a few red flags there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or I ran into one the other day and they, um, the name of their business was one thing. And then when you go to their website, it was the same name as their business, but missing two letters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, yeah. hey, wait a minute. Now. <laughs> and the funny thing is, this guy that contacted me, you go to the team, he wasn't even on there. Yeah. Yeah. But the ones that the ones that cracked me up, I ran into one the other day. I, I know we're changing the subject here, but it's important for business owners to know this. So one of the things I do, which this is another reason I love Google google chrome um and this was i can't remember if this was linkedin or facebook but i got a request from somebody that wanted to connect so if it's shady a lot of times i'll right click on the photo and do a search on the internet Mm -hmm. well the photo came up uh, apparently some porn star wow (laughs) yeah i was like yeah i don't think i'm gonna (laughs) the connection here yeah forget that i'll tell you what though i started cold outreach on linkedin last year uh, about mid-year and i started by going to different industries every week and just doing cold outreach and saying hey i see you do this and i do this and i think there's an yeah. opportunity for us to work together you know let's have a conversation and i was getting a lot of connections but it wasn't really going anywhere uh, you know that's that's about as far as it went i got some 
connections, but no conversations, no one-on-ones or anything like that. So then uh, later in the year, I switched it up. And instead of doing that whole thing about, uh, you know, this is what I do, this is what you do, you know, let's figure this out. I just said, hey, let's connect and left it at that. Yeah. And then when they connect, I just said, thanks for connecting. Have a great day. And what I found by doing that is if people are interested, they will go to my profile because they want to know who is this guy and why is he asking to connect? And yep. then if they like what's in my profile, then they're coming and saying, hey, I need somebody like you. Let's have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I've um, learned that a lot because when I did advertising for the longest time, um, even cold calling has changed. Mm -hmm. It used to be a lot of times you would just go in, do your pitch. If they said no, you walk away, you come back a week later or whatever. Now it's completely different. You want to build that relationship. So the sales process is taking more time, but what you're getting out of that, when you build that relationship, you're, it's not just the customer you're getting that's loyal. You're loyal to them as well. So you're building that loyalty. You're building that respect. And I think that's, I like that a lot better. I think that goes a long, long way. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's why mine's been successful. For sure. And I think people, because, you know, uh, like we were saying, you get these uh, requests out of left field. Mm -hmm. And I think people are generally more suspicious now or more in tune. With, yes. Uh, is it just going to be some, uh, like I get outreach for uh, lead generation. Like I can't even tell you how many lead generation companies are reach out to me every week on LinkedIn, you know, mm -hmm. blow up your sales. Yeah. You know? And, oh yeah. And I'm sure they're perfectly legitimate, but I mean, it's just, there's so many of them. And the thing is with, with me, especially with doing the podcast, I can't <laughs> tell you how many how many I get where uh, they want to basically help promote your podcast. Like, really? Mm -hmm. Seriously? And then, yet they don't have a clue about any of your episodes or anything. They feel that if you just don't have a lot of followers on social media, your podcast is not successful. It's like, yeah, no, that ain't the case. Mm -hmm. That's not the case at all. Um, with... The case studies. Yes. How, what made you decide to actually do this? Because, I mean, I with my careers in the past, I've heard about case studies a lot. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that's something that's, you don't hear about as much anymore that businesses do. So what gave you the idea to, you know, start this business and write the book? Sure. Case studies. Um, well, like I said, I started it as a freelance writer writing business mm -hmm. in 2020, um, evolved that to, uh, copywriting, to copywriting for B2B, to copywriting for B2B with storytelling elements. And then, uh, last kind of end of last year, I was kind of taking assessment where, you know, what's happened this last year, what do I want to do going forward? And I kind of realized, you know, going to these networking events, I was running to bunches of other copywriters and we we're all kind of saying the same thing, you know, we'll do these 10 different kinds of writing for you, you know, write emails, write social media posts, uh, website content, you know, uh, just hire us and send us money and we'll write all the good words for you. And uh, right. I, I said, you know what, this isn't going to work, you know. And then I also saw the, the writing on the wall with the, uh, the artificial intelligence stuff coming down the pipe. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a copywriting killer for anybody that's just, you know, kind of copying and pasting all the stuff that's on the internet because these software programs are going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, in doing my research at the beginning of last year, I found that case studies are one of the most effective pieces of marketing businesses can use. And it's an underserved niche space. Um, you know, I did some Google searches and it looked like, uh, there'd be copywriting shops that offered it as one of 10 or 15 different services, but there weren't very many that were doing just case studies. So I said, Hmm, right. That might be a good niche. And so, uh, you know, that's what, and the way that we do it with involving our clients, customers and having them tell the stories, um, that is something that the AI writing programs will never be able to do because the, like the chat GPTs, the only thing they know is what's on the internet and, the stories that we're gathering and telling for businesses aren't on the internet. Right. Right. 
Yeah, something you said there, the storytelling, yep. uh, which, again, I think a lot of businesses are missing out on this. How important is it? And you're a professional storyteller and mad genius, <laughs> according to your LinkedIn profile, which I love that. How important is it for these businesses, especially the business owners, to tell their story? And even put it on the website or whatever, record a video, whatever. But how important is it for them to tell their story? Oh, I think it's really important um, for a few different reasons. Number one, people you need to give people a reason to trust you. Unless you're Nike, Amazon, or Google, you know people aren't just going to show up and throw money at you, right? So you have to right. give them yeah. the proof. You have to give them the stories. You have to give them the reasons why they should trust you with their business. Um and the other thing is differentiation, right? Because you have these unique stories of the journeys you took your customers on. No other businesses can tell those stories. So that'll differentiate you in the marketplace also. So you got any uh, stories you can tell us from some of the case studies you've done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um <laughs> I just know because I know sometimes some business owners, you know, no matter what they do, they always have some either funny stories, or scary stories, or some stories they're like, yeah, no, I don't want to relive that one. <laughs> you know, I think one of the most interesting things that I've learned um, from getting into this space is that a lot of times when we send a questionnaire out to customers and they send it back and, uh, even before we uh, put it into the uh, final format of the story, uh, we'll pass it on to our clients, the business owners, and they'll look at it and they'll say, wow, I had no idea that this was what was important to the customer. So they'll learn more about what value they provide and what's valuable to their customer mm -hmm. about their business. So even beyond having that marketing piece, uh, they're making discoveries about their own business, which is uh, always interesting that they don't have that insight into uh, what their true value is. Right. Now, we and we keep talking about businesses. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but your business and even the book is also good for nonprofits, right? Sure. Yeah, because uh you know, if you like a nonprofit is going to look for let's say they're looking for uh donors. Well, how are you going to get a donor? You're going to have to talk about the good work that you've done. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do that mm -hmm. with the stories and the case studies. Yeah, exactly. And, and well, face it, nonprofits are always looking for ways to bring in money. And if you can find, you know, from the case studies, how to do it, what your, I guess your, uh, most of your donors or sponsors are coming from and what they're looking for, that would definitely help. So what is next for the mad genius, Jeff Strauss? <laughs> I am writing another book. Uh, this time it will be focused not on case studies, but on a specific industry that I want to be writing case studies for so that I can establish myself as an expert in that field and make connections with people in that field who I'll be contacting to uh, get the uh, material for my book. So it'll be, uh, again, a marketing tool for the business, but I'll be directly interacting with the people that I want to be marketing to, to write the book. Right. So what's your goal on when to release, when you went and had that released? You know, I just started the process um, because it's going to involve serving bunches of people and you can't really control how fast or slow they respond to. And even though it's a right. five question survey, these are, you know, busy people, you know, these are CEOs, these are researchers, yeah. these are founders. So uh, even a five minute survey can be, you know, uh, hard to find time for, which you know, given what we were talking about earlier, I'm sure you understand uh, time constraints. <laughs> well, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up. So now you haven't started sending the surveys out yet? Or you just have? trickle, just a trickle. Yeah. Okay. Explain to people, because I think this is where a, a lot, especially a lot of business owners, and we talked about it briefly with sales when you're, when you're doing sales, going to different businesses, so technically you're in the same boat because you're trying to get the CEOs of these businesses, right? Mm -hmm. How, and did you do it for your, for this book as well? No, no. Okay. All right. 
So is there a certain process you're following or that you're going to follow to, in order to try to get to these CEOs? Because I know sometimes that's the hardest part. It is. Um, and the first batch I sent out on LinkedIn, um, and I got about a 50% response rate so far. And I'm Really? 50% response. Well, small sample size. Very small sample size. Um, that's still good. Um, that's still pretty good because most of the time it's like a third. Okay. Um, and got one positive response and one negative response. Um, one said, uh, yeah, I'd love to participate. Already sent the survey back. The other one said, no, I really don't have the time right now. Uh, so I just said, sent it back, said, you know, thanks for your time. Um, if you know anybody that could spare the time to do it, please pass my name along. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I am testing different methods now. So now I'm going to the websites of these businesses and organizations looking for their mm -hmm. contact information and emailing people directly based on the contact information on their websites. Uh, because, you know, um, again, you know, people in, in those uh, uh, positions that take so much of their time and energy, they might not be checking their LinkedIn daily like some of us do. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes, believe it or not, the uh, – I don't even know if it's called a secretary anymore or not. Whatever the position is, the gatekeeper, let's say that. Right. Sometimes they know more information <laughs> than the CEO actually does. It's true. Uh, yeah, it's, which is, hell, sometimes that, that could be the person to talk to. You never know. And I'll tell you, the one thing that, you know, when I was doing the LinkedIn, I just, I just doing a short message. Uh, yeah. Didn't really uh, explain the benefit of why they should participate. Uh, whereas with the email, I'm putting it right in the body of the email. Hey, you know, if you answer these survey questions, uh, whether I use your quotes or not in the book, just for participating, you will be mentioned in the book, uh, name, business name, uh, right. that sort of thing. Um, so there's an incentive to participate because it's free marketing for them. Exactly. Which is a smart idea. Very smart idea. Well, Jeff, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, besides your website and where to get the book again. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, the website is just case studies.com. The book is the book on case studies available on Amazon. Jeff, I want to thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope this book is doing very well. And if it's not, I know it will, because this is something that businesses need and nonprofits. They definitely need it. They got to look into doing the case studies. And I know the next book is going to be a success too. And if there's, um, well, look over here in the Maryland way. If there's any businesses over here that you can't get a hold of, let me know because I might know the contact that you need. Awesome. Will do. So thanks a lot, Jeff. Thank you, Rich. I want to thank Jeff for coming on and make sure you get his book, The Book on Case Studies, How to Build Trust and Profit Using Customer Success Stories. I'm telling you, that's that's great marketing right there. When you can use case studies and you're using other people's testimonials, more or less, their word to help promote your business, it makes sense. And you can actually find the book online at Amazon. It's only, I think, $15 and I think it's $5 on Kindle, something like that. But I'll have the links for that in the show notes. And make sure you go to his website as well, Just Case Studies. Com. If he can help you in any way, contact him. Now, for a podcast, I actually, I wanted to find a podcast that Jeff was a guest on. And I found this one. It's called Focus and Freedom for Entrepreneurs, and it's with Val Lowe. And she talks to several different entrepreneurs. Well, yeah, just check out the trailer. Welcome to Focus and Freedom with Val Lowe. I'm Val, the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to make an impact in their world and where we aim to help you clear the business clutter and create business bliss. Because we believe a clear mind and a clear desk means more time, more money, and freedom. Hey, I'm Val Lowe, and I'm thrilled to be here in this new podcast, Focus and Freedom for Entrepreneurs. This first episode is super short and really designed to let you know exactly what this is about so you can decide if you want to become part of our community. It's designed to feature entrepreneurs that are doing extraordinary things in business and making an impact in the world. 
It's also about all things entrepreneurial and enjoying your business bliss. I started my business journey as a professional organizer and quickly realized that as amazing a job I did for my clients to get their offices organized, it wasn't too long before they needed organizing again. And that's when I delved into learning about mindset and habits and how to be more productive and efficient. Along the way, I created the Focus and Freedom Planner that helps me and my clients clarify the top goals for the year and carry all the projects and tasks throughout that year to actually accomplish those big goals. No more hoping to accomplish these aspirations. This powerful tool gets me and my clients there. From the planner, I developed the Focus and Freedom Method, a step-by-step -step system that takes you from clarity and plan and clearing the clutter to getting stuff done and being more productive and efficient, to structure and processes for growth, and most importantly, having the time and freedom to do what matters in business and life. On this podcast, you will hear entrepreneurs share their stories and business lessons in building their successful businesses. Our guests are excited about what they do and so happy to share what has worked for them and what has been challenging. If you follow this podcast, I will share with you the latest tried and true ways to clear the business clutter and mind clutter so you can stay focused, be strategic, efficient and organized, and for creating the structure and processes that give you the freedom for what matters most. I don't know where you are in your business, what your experience is. I do know about entrepreneurs and their passion for business. The more focused and efficient we are, the more we experience happiness and satisfaction. This is what the Focus and Freedom podcast is for. Clear the business clutter and thrive because we believe when you have a clean desk, a clear mind, and create structure, you can experience your business bliss. Have a listen. Let me know what you think. I'd be happy to have you join me on this journey. Thank you for tuning into the Focus and Freedom podcast. If you're interested in all things entrepreneurial and finding your business bliss, check out valo.me. Head over to iTunes, like, subscribe, and review. Until next time, keep your head clean and your desk clear. Hmm. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast, or if there's a topic you want me to talk about, just go to conversationswithrichbennett.com, click the Be a Guest link, and fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you, and we'll get everything set up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast as well as the newsletter. And check out all my sponsors and, of course, my co-hosts. Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe. And thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Hartford, and Cecil Counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, 
Look no further than the Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 